Hi everybody. Let's talk about liquidations of partnerships. The problem that I sent you and that you see on the screen is from another textbook, but I think it's a pretty good problem. Last semester I had the class work this problem during class time, but because of the snow days we've lost a day, so we're going to do this in a video instead. So at this point you should pause the video and do a quick read of the problem. Okay, good job. Three university students, Cho, Kenny, and Martinez, they were a partnership. They've been successful. Basically, their business was to rent furniture and appliances to students. Those three are graduating now and moving to other cities, so they're going to sell the business. Here's how they've been sharing profits, 7 to 5 to 4. Right? So that does not add up to 10, so you can't read that as 70%, 50%, 40%. But don't be thrown off by that. All you have to do is add it up and each person gets a fraction. So 7, 5, and 4 together would be 16. So Cho gets 7 sixteenths. Kenny, 5 sixteenths. Martinez, 4 sixteenths. You gotta get comfortable working with those kind of fractions. Here's a partnership's current balance sheet. They got a little bit of cash. They have some account receivables that are owed, I guess, from some of their student customers. And they have a lot of rental equipment and that's shown net of depreciation. Over on the other side, they've got some liabilities to the bank, and then each partner has a capital account. Notice there's no retained earnings. All we have is partner capital accounts. The balance sheet is in balance. So the partnership's going to liquidate, and your job will be to say how much should each of these three partners get when the business is liquidated. Now, a good way to start is to think of it as the opposite of a formation of a partnership. When we talked about formation, we said whatever you put in, that becomes your capital account. So logically, whatever's in your capital account should be what you can take out. So let's start there. Cho's got a capital balance of $40,000. So a good starting point for you mentally is to say, well, shouldn't Cho get $40,000 in a liquidation? Shouldn't Kenny get $5,600? That would be true if we were sure the assets were worth what they're being shown at on the balance sheet. But as accountants, we know, other than cash, that is often not the case. For example, they have 15,000 of receivables. Ask yourself, what are the chances that all 15,000 is collectible given that their customer base is students? All right, so they're selling out the business. So let's read that paragraph. The offer this other group of students is making is $95,000 for the equipment and $8,000 for the receivables. So rather than selling the entire business, we're going to sell the equipment sell the receivables. So the total cash coming in is 103000 in addition to the $7,000 cash that's already there. What assets will they have after they make the sale? All they'll have is cash of 110000 The first person to get paid though is the liabilities. So 110000 minus 52 is going to leave 58000 to distribute among the three partners. Notice the three capital accounts far more than 58000 So not everybody's going to get what's in their capital account. They're going to get something less. Our job is to say, what should each person get? Why does each person get less? Because the receivables are sold at less than their basis. That's going to generate a loss. The equipment is sold at less than its basis. That's going to generate a loss. So those losses need to be allocated to the partner's capital accounts according to their profit and loss sharing ratios. So again, in this chapter, you're going to want to use columns. I set up a column for each of the three partners and put in their beginning capital balance as given in the problem. Now I need to allocate the loss. So there's a loss of $7,000 on the receivables and a loss of $25,000 on the equipment. So let's just add those together. 25 and 7 would be 32. So I'm going to allocate a $32,000 loss. So again, Cho is going to get 7 sixteenths of the loss, Kenny 5 sixteenths, Martinez 4 sixteenths. So take each of those fractions, multiplied by 32, show them as reductions to their capital accounts. Okay, so I've done that and you can see the losses that has been allocated to each partner. Now I need to deduct those losses from their capital balances to get an updated balance for each person. 
Okay, and there's their updated balances. Now, what you should notice right away is that Kenny now has a negative capital balance. So what would happen in reality is we would need to ask Kenny to contribute $4,400 back into the partnership to bring his or her account back up to zero. The reason Kenny needs to put that money in is Kenny has now, at least in the past, withdrawn more than his or her share of partnership assets. So if Kenny doesn't put that money in, in a sense, Kenny has stolen money from Cho and Martinez. So we're going to ask Kenny to put that money in. But here's the catch. There's a good chance Kenny won't put the money in. Kenny's already left town. So what we have to do until Kenny pays is assume that Kenny won't pay. And we cannot leave anyone with a negative balance. So we have to take Kenny's loss and reallocate it to the other two partners. So we now need to take a loss of 4400 allocated to Cho and Martinez. And because Kenny can't take the loss, because Kenny doesn't have enough capital account, the loss has to be taken by Cho and Martinez. What part? You're not going to split it equally. Again, you got to go back to their profit and loss sharing ratios. But notice, Kenny's not here anymore. So now all that's going to matter is that Cho was a 7, Martinez was a 4. So Cho, add 7 and 4, you get 11. Cho has to take 7 elevenths of the loss, and Martinez, 4 elevenths. Once you reallocate Kenny's negative capital balance, update everyone's account. Everyone's account either needs to be zero or positive. So the updated balance tells us that Cho and the liquidation, after we sell the receivables and the equipment, after we pay off the 52000 of liabilities, there will be $58,000 cash left. Cho will get 23200 of it. Kenny will get nothing. But also, Kenny will get a request to put $4,400 in. Not only does he get nothing in the liquidation, he's going to be asked to contribute additional assets. And Martinez will get $34,800. If Kenny does send the $4,400 in at some point, we would reallocate it back to Cho would get $2,800 of it. Martinez would get $1,600 more cash. But until that happens, all they get is the capital accounts across the bottom.